Okay, we're going to do a little one-way ANOVA in this example. Uh, so if we read this, the data found below measures the amounts of greenhouse gas emissions from three types of vehicles. The measurements are in tons per year, expressed as CO2 equivalents. Use a .025 significance level to test the claim that the different types of vehicles um, have the same mean amount of greenhouse gas emissions. Based on the results, does the type of vehicle appear to affect the amount of greenhouse gas emissions? Okay, so let's check out the data. There is the data. Uh, so uh, type A, B, C, so A, B, and C are each three different types of cars, and then um, took a bunch of samples from, you know, from um, took a sample from several cars in each type. So there's where our data is. Again, notice uh, there's not the exact same amount in each type for uh, the number of samples, um, and that's fine. They do not have to be equal, so we're good there. But ANOVA, uh, remember ANOVA, basically your, your uh, hypothesis is always all of them are equal. Uh, so that means we're either in a B or a D. Uh, and the opposite of everybody being equal is at least one person is different or at least one thing is different. And so B here, at least one of the means is different. So got that out of the way. Determine the test statistic. Uh, so let's jump into StatCrunch. And so if you look at the data, if you click here, this will actually open a nice little window for us in StatCrunch and make this a little bigger. Now, uh, before we do that though, if we go to the formula sheet, here is the formula sheet uh, and uh, goes through all the steps. The formula is kind of nasty, uh, so that's why we're going to let StatCrunch do it. Um, but I would still like to look up my critical value um, also always check the conditions samples must be independent uh, from normal populations and uh, the number of categories needs to be three or greater uh, and um, each population must have the same variance so in this scenario I don't think it explicitly said all that but we're gonna we're just gonna assume that to be able to do the problem and uh, there's your degrees of freedom so let's use the degrees of freedom here um, to uh, look up our critical value. I, I always like to do that even if we are not explicitly asked for that. And you should look up the critical value before finding that test statistic. So if we go back, um, so critical value, this comes from the F distribution, right? Uh, degrees of freedom in the numerator is k minus 1, little k is the number of categories, so 3, 3 minus 1 is 2. Uh, degrees of freedom in the denominator, uh, that's capital N minus k, capital N is the total of all the data together. And so, we're going to calculators F, numerator, that's 2, k minus 1. Um, for this one, uh, let's see here, if you look over, there's 10, uh, 18, plus 9 more, that'd be 27, minus 3 would be uh, 24. And I believe we had 0 0.025, oops, just 0 0.025, and uh, ANOVAs are always to the right. Uh, we're doing a one uh, right tail only one way ANOVAs and it's always to the right. So there's my critical value by the way, 4.3187. So if I needed it. Okay, uh, let's do the actual um, stats now. Uh, so we're going to do ANOVA one way. We're going to select our columns. All right, there we are, and uh, we don't really actually need any of this other stuff. We can if we want. Um, I 
for habit of just other stuff uh, that comes down the road later, I like to compute the Tukey uh, test, but uh, not necessary for this course. Um, but I'm going to go into that anyways. Uh, well, I'll leave it off for now, I guess. So we'll compute. And there it is. So this is nice. It gives me the mean for type A. Now that mean is X bar. 9.19 is X bar for type A, so the average of those 10 items. Um, and then the standard deviation of those 10 items. And then the standard error that's accompanied to the, with those 10 items. And then all of that stuff, so those are my column statistics. All of those get used to find your, um, your some of the squares and the mean squares and then the two mean squares between and within. Uh, are used to find that F statistic. So there's my F statistic, there's my P value down here. Uh, we call this an ANOVA table. So if this was a paper and pencil test, um, I, I want to see that entire ANOVA table written out uh, just to show all the parts and everything. But anyhow, so 0.6046, so if I jump back uh, around to two decimal places, so point, what's point, uh, 0.6046, so 0.60, I guess. Was that right? So now I'm doubting myself. Uh, yeah, 0 0.6046, so if I run to two decimal places, point 0.60. Excellent. Um, what is the critical value? Ah, good. So it did ask for it, and I already have that in hand. That was 4.3187. So around two decimal places, so 4.318, so 0.32. Nice work. And what's my p-value? P value is 0.5544. So, point um, five five around two decimal places five five four four. So that would round it 0.55. There it is. Now my p value is 0.55. My significance level is 0.025. Uh, clearly, the p value is larger than my alpha. Um, and so we are going to fail to reject, right? And then if we're thinking about it, on this picture here, uh, there is where 4.3 is where the uh, rejection region starts, but our F statistic was 0.6. So we're clear over here is where our F statistic is. So clearly not in the rejection region, okay? So what is the conclusion? Uh, we are going to not reject the null hypothesis. And in other words, if we do not reject the null, uh, that means we think they're all equal. So conclude that, conclude that the type of vehicle um, does not appear to affect greenhouse gas emissions for these three types. Excellent. So there it is. That's an ANOVA test. Uh, one way ANOVA, uh, you're going to really just let StatCrunch do all the work for you. Most of it is just kind of copying things over and all that. So there it is.